Hey y'all, this is Marshall with Undaunted Pursuit Podcast. I wanted to take a few minutes tonight and talk to y'all a little about the thorn in your flesh. You know, sometimes in life we experience things or go through things and sometimes those things seem to never go away. Even when we pray about these things and we ask God to heal us of these ailments or diseases or sicknesses, or pains, and sometimes God doesn't take those away from us. Sometimes he does. And in those moments when God doesn't take those things out of our lives or heal us from those issues, we question God and we say, God, why? Why aren't you healing me of this? Why aren't you taking this out of my life? It can be frustrating and it can be annoying and uh, it, it can make you very mad. But I think it's important for us to stop and get into God's Word. And a good place to go to that talks about the thorn in the flesh is in 2 Corinthians 12. And I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And this talks about Paul's vision and his thorn. So I'm going to read through this. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page here where it kind of breaks it down for us and explains what Paul is talking about and what Jesus is talking about in this verse or in this chapter and all these verses. So this is Paul saying, he says, I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me three times, three times, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, "Now pay attention because this is God speaking, this is Jesus speaking to Paul. God says to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So when I read that, I see Paul has a thorn in his side. And and Paul's prayed to God saying, God, (laughs) take this away from me. Take this thorn out of my life. Take this thorn out of my side. You know, whatever it was Paul was dealing with, an ailment, a sickness, a disease, we're not sure because he doesn't state that here. But whatever it is, Paul said, said, he's gone to God and said, God, please heal me of this. Take this out of my life. Take this away from me. Just get rid of it. And he's prayed three times, and God didn't take it away. God didn't heal him from whatever it was he was dealing with. God wanted to leave that thorn in his side so that people could see Christ working in Paul's life. So people could see Christ moving in Paul's life. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. This is 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. God's power is made perfect in our weaknesses. God's power is made perfect in your diseases, your cancer, your sicknesses, your illnesses, your disabilities. Even even in your temptations and your hardships and struggles in your life, you could have a weakness, and that weakness could be pornography, an addiction. That weakness could be Weakness could be alcohol. It could be drugs. It's a weakness. But in that weakness, God says, My grace is sufficient for you, 
for my power is made perfect in your weakness. God's power is made perfect in our weakness. If we allow God to work in our lives, to move in us, whether he takes something away from you or not, whether he heals you of something or not, people are going to see God's power working in us and working through us and in our lives, in our weaknesses. That's my understanding. That's what I'm seeing here. That's, that's, that's just my interpretation of this chapter here. And this isn't the full chapter. It goes on and talks about, in uh, verse 11 and on, it talks about Paul's concern for the Corinthians. I'm not going to go into all that. I just wanted to focus on the thorn in Paul's side. So I'm going to go on down below where it kind of breaks down chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. And uh, it really better, uh, it better explains this so that we can understand this. So y'all can understand this a little bit better. So it says, we don't know what Paul's thorn in the flesh was because he doesn't tell us. Some have suggested that it was malaria, epilepsy, or a disease of the eyes. And it says you can go to Galatians 4, 13 through 15. Whatever the case, it was a chronic and debilitating problem, which at times kept him from working. The storm was a hindrance to his ministry, and he prayed for its removal, but God refused. Paul was a very self-sufficient person, so this thorn must have been very difficult for him. Three times Paul prayed for healing and did not receive it. He received, however, things far greater because he received greater grace from God, a stronger character, humility, and an ability to empathize with others. And see, that's, that's something really important to point out is, you know, whatever you're dealing with in your life, whatever hardship you have in your life, through that, God can use you. And God can make you stronger. He can give you a stronger character. He can give you humility. He can give you an ability to empathize with others. If you didn't have some sort of pain in your body, how could you empathize with somebody else who's been dealing with that same pain? It's a lot easier, I feel like, sometimes to go and pray for somebody or pray with somebody who has the same kind of struggle or pain or whatever it is they're dealing with as you. You can relate with that person and it makes it so more heartfelt and so more real because you get it. You understand where that person's coming from. So God can use you in that moment for that person to empathize with them, to relate to them. God can make you stronger, better character, humility. In addition, this goes on to say, in addition, it benefited those around, around Paul as they saw God at work in his life. And that's something else to point out is because of Paul's weaknesses, because of the thorn in Paul's side, others saw God working in Paul's life. You know, whether it's through the humility or the stronger character or the him being able to empathize with others, or maybe just, you know, Paul leaning on God and saying, God, you know what? I can't handle this. I can't deal with this. I've got to lean on you for my strength. I've got to rely on you to get through each and every day. People are going to see that. People are going to see God in you. And that's what we want to do. We don't want people to see us. We want people to see God in us. So it goes on and it says, God according to his sovereign plan. I remember this is just the, the explanation of chapter 12, verse 7 through 8 at the bottom. Um, God according to his sovereign plan doesn't heal some believers of their physical ailments. We don't know why some are spared and others aren't. God chooses according to his divine purposes. Our task is to pray, to believe, and to trust. Another great point. When you're going through a hardship like this in your life, how are you handling it? Are you getting mad at God? It's just okay sometimes. I think God understands. I really do. God knows. I mean, he understands the frustration. He understands the pain. Look at what he went through for us. But are you stopping and are you praying to God? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you talking to God? Like I'm talking to y'all right now. Are you building your relationship with Christ while you're going through this difficult time in your life? So we don't know why some are spared and others aren't. God chooses according to his divine purpose. Our task is to pray, to believe, and to trust. Paul is living proof that holy living and courageous faith do not ensure instant physical healing. When we pray for healing, we must trust our bodies to God's care. We must recognize that nothing separates us from his love. Romans 8, 35-39 explains that. And that our spiritual condition is always more important than our physical condition. Again, great, great points in that. Is we, you know, we, we must realize that nothing separates us from, from God's love. Uh, 
And and when we do pray, you know, we got to pray with a sincere heart that, uh, you know, that you're completely having faith and trust in God, that he's going to heal whatever he is. But you've also got to have that same faith and trust in God that if he doesn't heal you, that he knows what he's doing. You know, let's let's think about it. You know, God knows who we are. He knows everything about us. He knows every little hair on your body, everything about you. you remember, he, he created us. He created you in your mother's womb. That's what God did. He created us. So if he created us and he knows everything about us, don't you think that we should trust whatever healing we're asking of him to actually heal? And if he doesn't heal, if he chooses not to heal for whatever reason, whatever his purpose is for our life, if he chooses not to heal us, don't you think that we should still trust him with that too? We've got to trust God with the good and the bad, with the, with the easy and the difficult. We have to have trust and faith in God no matter what we're going through in our lives. Why? Because God has a plan. He has a perfect purpose for our lives. He knows what he's doing. So why aren't we trusting God? So when it comes to the thorn in your side, whatever that may be in your life, whether it's a disease, maybe you're sick, maybe you have some addictions you're dealing with, uh, maybe your marriage is not doing well, whatever, you're, whatever that thorn in your side is, are you trusting God with that? Are you having faith in Christ with that thorn in your side? Are you asking God to heal you when he doesn't heal you? Are you walking away and giving up on God? Are you pressing in and going deeper in that relationship with Christ and trusting him then knowing and trusting in God that he knows what he's doing in your life, that he knows what he's doing with that thorn in your side and why he's doing it? We've got to trust in Christ. We've got to trust God. That thorn is there for a reason. And it's maybe not, maybe it's not for you to know. But trust God with what he's doing with that thorn in your side. That's all I got to say today, guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Um, you know, this is something Aaron and I just love doing. We love getting on here. Uh, whether it's just us individually uh, or together like we usually do. Uh, we, we love it. We enjoy it. Uh, it's a blessing that God is using us to do this again like uh, Aaron and I always always tell you guys we're just two ordinary guys uh, we're no one special we're not theologically trained we're just two guys giving our interpretation of God's amazing living word and uh, hoping that it helps y'all y'all get something out of this and y'all can enjoy it because we love it and it helps us we learn more we did it we dig deeper into God's word and uh, it helps us grow in our, in our walk with Christ as well so Again, thank y'all for listening. We love you. God bless and have a great week. We'll see y'all later. Bye.